Hello guys, I recently received this comment on YouTube. So the person is asking when to use Spotty Laravel permission package over the default core gates and policies of Laravel. A valid question. So let me try to explain in this video. So recently I've reshot the video version of roles and permissions in Laravel 12 course where I do talk about Spotty Laravel permission and complex scenario. But I realized that the course is more about how to use the package, but I didn't fully answer the when. So let's look at a few examples in this video. And I've prepared kind of a presentation for you almost. And let's take a look at a simple project with Laravel where you would not probably use Spotty Laravel permission. Simple blog with three roles, admin, author, and reader. And the permissions are around the posts. So who can access what? The comments and the user management. And the thing is that in most cases, it's true or false based on the role. So it's not really dynamic. There are no more roles planned, no more permissions planned because it's a simple blog post. Everything is pretty static. And for that, it would be totally fine to define these gates in app service providers. So who can edit post, who can delete post, and for example, who can view draft. And similarly, a few lines about comments, who can do what, and a few lines about user management, which may even be one role of who can manage users, which will be the admin, that's it. And then in the blade, for example, here on the bottom, you can see you just call the name of that permission of that gate, and that's it. And you do the same in controller or wherever else you need to check the permission, and that's it. So no policies and no spicy package. In other words, simple project then the only thing you need to do is to add also a global scope. Do not forget to implement this part of roles and permission matrix own only. So authors would see only their posts by author ID, for example. Now imagine a more complex project for project management, for example, where there are more roles, project manager, team lead, developer, client, and there is a potential for more roles like accountant or branch manager or something like that. And then there are more entities, objects, models to manage projects, tasks, teams, reporting, communication, for example, file management, and not everything is a crud here. So report is totally a separate logic with who can access what. And as you can see, it's more granular with more, not just true or false, but more complex logic. So for that, if you try to define the gates like this in app service provider, that would be a huge file. And even if you divide them into policies, that logic would be pretty complex. So for that, you would want to use Spotty Laravel permission package to store those permissions in the database instead of the code. And complexity of the project is just one metric, but another reason to use a package is dynamic behavior. So if you want some admin or different users to manage those permissions and assign them to different roles dynamically, so you would have some kind of admin panel like one we had in recent project, for example, you edit a user or edit a role and then there are checkboxes for various permissions or roles or drop downs, something like this. So manageable by admin dynamically. Then by definition, you cannot store that in the code. It would be in the database, right? So then Spotty Laravel permission is your best choice. Now, speaking about the database, you would think that if you store the permissions in the database and check them every time on every page or every request, you would have performance issues. And you may be partially right. So if we visit any other page of the same project and I've installed Laravel debug bar, if we take a look at the queries to check the roles and permissions, Spotty package launches two queries to the database. First, check for the role with user ID one and then check for permissions with user ID one. But then also, as you can see, select from cache. And this is interesting. Not sure why I don't know the answer, but it says in the documentation of Spotty Laravel permission, roles and permission data are cached to speed up performance. But then my question is in my testing, why those queries are performed? Because if we take a look at the cache, we have some data. I'm using database driver for caching. We have Spotty permission cache with quite a lot of JSON things. It's probably caching the roles and permissions, but doesn't cache the user data. So that's why we do need to requery by model ID. At least this is my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. But also what cache helps with is to automatically reload the relationship if you do something like this. So if you do some assignment or revoking permissions, 
then cash would help you to avoid extra problems. But generally, this is kind of a correct approach, in my opinion, to query the database on every page to check the permissions is a good security practice. Otherwise, if you take it from cash somewhere every time, you may bump into a situation where some access is revoked, but it's still accessible from the cash. I don't know, this is my opinion and my interpretation, we can discuss in the comments below. And also finally, if you use spotty permission package like this in the policy you would have has permission to, has permission to, and others, you still need to add global scope for eloquent queries for that model, because what package does is check the permission when the person is already visiting the page of edit post or list the post, but it doesn't filter the data. You need to take care of that yourself. So this is where I get back to the image of global scope. So if you do want to give the access of the data to someone only their posts or their records, do that. For example, in a global scope, you can do that in controllers as well, some filtering or in other ways, but Spotty Laravel permission does not cover that part. This is just outside of their scope of what they want to do. So yeah, what do you think about my kind of interpretation of when to use that package? Am I right here or maybe I missed something important? We can discuss in the comments below. And have you ever had a situation where you used that package but then regretted it or vice versa? Share your stories as well in the comments. And again, if you want the overview of roles and permissions in Laravel, my recently refilmed, reshot one hour course is freshly available to you and I will link that in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.